Welcome everyone to MJ Hobby Corner. MJ here and this is my uh, solo game of the week and I chose to play uh, Nordic Weasel's Weasel Tech. So for those of you guys that don't know, uh, Weasel Tech is a mech war game that involves, uh, is heavily involved with narrative and campaign play. But the idea is that you can also play it as a duel with another player. If you didn't want to do campaign play, you can also uh, play it as a solo game and just, you know, practice the combat rules, however you want to play it. Uh, those of you guys that know Nordic Weasel, you know that uh, his games are, are very free. That There's a lot of freedom to do what you want in the rules. Uh, this game is very similar to the game's Five Parsec from Home, and uh, at the core base, at the core mechanic, it's very similar to that kind of game, that kind of narrative play. And Five Parsecs from Home is a fabulous sci-fi game. There's also Five Leagues from the Borderlands, which is sort of the fantasy version. So basically, that's Weasel Tech. Weasel Tech deals with Max. It is also heavily inspired by anime, so you have a very theatrical uh, kind of combat uh, system in play. So in this video, this is not going to be a great representative of the game. I'm going to say that right now only because I'm going to be doing the, the first training mission, the introductory scenario. It is designed to really uh, give you a sense of how the game plays, how the combat works. But we're not doing any of the campaign steps, right? Uh, we're not doing any of the narrative steps. So for that reason, I think the true flavor of these games, uh, anything in Nordic Weasel, is that sort of uh, narrative system that the games have, right? That narrative mechanic. So uh, uh, according to the introductory scenario, uh, this training scenario is commonly used in pilot simulation training. So in this encounter, uh, a strike force disengaged from a patrol must now break through an enemy screening force. So we already saw the enemy screening force. And so my guys have to break through. Okay. So both sides enter the battle area with full awareness of the opposing force, making it a straight fight to the death. So this is important because normally uh, we would be using some uh, blip markers to represent the swarms, okay? And I use these old uh, markers from um, Dark Age Apocalypse. These make excellent little blip markers. And, uh, but we're not going to be doing that in this particular scenario because uh, we are very much aware of each other. We've already kind of uh, detected each other. We, you know, we know each other's strengths. So every mech is intact and fully armored. Um, some weapons and all equipment has been expended prior to the engagement. That's very important. Uh, this it, scenario will not use the random events phase and the HQ support phase. Okay, We will not need the rules for defenses or for blips. So that's very important. That will come after in, in future games where I play... Uh, more, you know, complete campaigns, then we'll see how the blips work. If you've ever played Bug Hunt, uh, 5 par 6 Bug Hunt, then you pretty much know it's very similar. So turn one, my wraith is going to get uh, two actions, two out of the three actions. And he is just going to move right up against a terrain feature. That's it. Okay, so he's by the tree here. Um, I do not. Oh, I, yeah, I have partial, I have line of sight to that, um, swarm over there 
behind the tree. So I think he's going to take a shot. All right. So check it out. Okay, so uh, Wraith has moved right behind the uh, tree there. And uh, I'm going to say that's just like a small patch of forest. So uh, his line of sight does cross the base of the tree. So he's going to get minus one to the hit. Uh, he has plus one normally for the beam weapon. So now it's just straight dice. So uh, I need a four. And I'm just going to roll the dice and see if he hits. So uh, that is the unit of Macaws, uh, Unit B, Swarm. And so I need, they have a screening of two. So I need two or over to hit. I rolled a four. So yeah, they are hit. And that takes away one uh, figure away from the base. So they're over there. Let's see. So one of these guys gets taken out. Boop. There we go. All right. So one damage to the enemy already, and I'm gonna just put a little explosion marker right there. Make it a little more dramatic. Okay, so that guy has been destroyed here in turn one. Now we're gonna move on to the next phase, which is enemy elite phase yeah okay so the enemy gets to move now and it's their elite mech that's gonna move that guy over there um, let's see now so he is a mamba mech with movement six so um, he is gonna move towards the uh, closest player at all time and then if he can shoot he can shoot that is a forest in between there so he doesn't have line of sight so he's just going to move right here and that does put him in line of sight of one of my mechs there you go weapons fire detected and he's firing a salvo of rockets Right, so first things first, uh, Tempest has an intercept rating of three, so the enemy is going to have to roll a, he's going to roll three dice, and he needs fours to see how many rockets are actually shot down by my Tempest. So any fours will mean a rocket down from the original salvo of three. So looks like only one rocket goes through. I shot down the other two with defenses and now he rolls this one and a four or over will hit and he rolls a six which is one damage uh, to my mech and that is one armor point taken away he has armor uh, armor three so he has two armor left once the armor's gone, we roll on the damage tables. All right. So that was it. Oh, we're sh slamming each other here. All right. So we're going to go to the second player action phase now. And Tempest, I think, is going to make his move. He got one armor point uh, sh taken away due to the rocket. I think he's going to move um, six inches. That's his total move. So Tempest moves over to the edge of the ruined building here trying to take as much cover as he can yeah let's put him right there so he still has one of his guns trained on that mamba mech all right let's see so he didn't do any uh non-combat actions he and he is just going to fire right on that mamba now there is some stuff in the way so i'm going to give it a minus one just to be fair. And he has an MG05 machine gun with a spread of six inches, durability two. So now for machine gun, right next to Mamba. And that swarm can be sprayed because there is a lot less than six inches between those two. So um, that's what he's gonna do. He's gonna hit two birds with one stone. So I'm gonna separate the dice as evenly as possible they're five so I give three to the mamba and two to the swarm 
So let me just uh, get some different color dice here, just so I know. So the three Mamba uh, dice are gonna be a white dice, and then the two that are going for the swarm are black. So now I can roll these all at the same time. All right, so I need fours, and I can't roll any ones because that wouldn't be good. Fours. Oh, a tear, well, two fives, geez. The Mamba gets hit. The uh, little swarm does not get hit at all. The Mamba takes two hits from the machine gun. The durability of the gun is two, so that's okay. Um, and the machine gun is at minus one, but I still make it because I have five. So he, Mamba takes two points of armor damage. And Mamba has armor three. He only has armor one left. So let's just give him... Yeah, I'm going to... Yeah, there we go. Boom. All right. Moving on, moving on. Okay, so turn one's almost over. All right, so next is, I believe, an enemy phase. That was the second player action phase. Now it's the enemy swarm phase. Now both swarms are going to get to move. So let's see what happens here. Okay, so swarm A, which is uh, another three macaws. This is the three macaw base. He's gonna move, they're gonna move uh, five inches towards the closest enemy, which is my, this, that guy over here, my Tempest. Okay, so they move forward and uh, directly in line of sight with Tempest. There's nothing really blocking them. So uh, they are going to fire. They are, they are armed with beams, firepower one. So it's gonna get one die and I need, uh, let's see. In order to hit with my beam, uh, Tempest has a screen rating of two, so they need twos to hit. Let's see if they are successful. That's not good, little suckers. And they roll a two exactly. Oh, man. All right. So, uh, yep, they do hit. It does hit, I mean, and that's another armor point. Uh, let me see. They don't get any pluses with their beams or anything like that. Yeah, and it's only one die. Okay, so he takes another point of damage right here. Tempest does. And we're just going to put the next thing. By the way, I'm going to just mark these on my sheet with little markers so I know who moved. Um, it's only three of them to keep track of, but I'll just do it anyway. All right, um, so now that the swarm, that swarm has moved, taken its action, we go to uh, swarm B. And by the way, they have a screen one, which means that my beam, last time I made a mistake, the, the beam was supposed to hit it automatically because the screen rating is the number you need to hit with the beam. So screen rating one means you roll a one. Um, <clears> the <throat> one are over and that's it. So th it would have they would have been hit. He would have been hit automatically by my weapon. All right. Uh, so now they move and they're of course going to move straight towards the wraith. They move a total of five inches. Right up the road, stick into the road. And then they fire. Oh, they're armed with machine guns. Yikes. The machine gun is firepower two. Okay. So two dice for the little buggers. And this time they do need fours. Um, so they roll two dice. The swarm rolls two dice, hit on fours, and that is two hits. I take two points of damage to the armor. He has armor two. 
So he no longer has any armor. His armor is done for. And that means if Wraith is hit again by anything, then he's going to roll on the mech damage tables. And that could be very bad. So not good for the Wraith. He is smoking. So uh, we have no enemy defense phases in this game. We have no. We do have an enemy reinforcement phase, and uh, I believe we do have a resolution phase. But there's no defense phase. Defense phase would be any kind of like cannon, automatic uh, like robotic guns or robotic cannon that might be near an objective. If you have objective markers, then uh, the defense phase is when they go. Uh, anything that's like robotic missile launchers, anything like that. So I think uh, seeing the explosion here on his two comrades. Um, yeah, let me just, which way is he going to go? Well, there's two enemies here. So Warhound is uh, decided to move his six inches. Again, close to the bridge as much as possible. These guys are huge. So, for the machine guns, he needs fours. Um, right now. Yikes, I got two ones. Oh, that's not good. Because I rolled two ones, which means the gun jams. Now, there's uh, two hits there, but I'm going to check something real quick. All right, so uh, the machine gun jams, unfortunately. So uh, it just jams before any bullets can come out. Uh, that sucks. So uh, Mamba is safe for now. And uh, very important is when firing at a single target uh, with machine guns, you do get minus one. So minus one to hit uh, at an enemy if you're firing at a single target, which he should have been firing at both targets and I missed that and then that's a critical mistake rather than firing at that at the single target do my spread to so that I can hose all of those so that was my mistake I'm gonna keep it because I made it and so in the honesty of the game that is a failure okay so he does get minus one uh, because I'm firing at a single target even then uh, he's within 10 inches so he fire he hits on fours Anything beyond 10 inches for a machine gun, you hit on fives, okay? Plus minus one if you're doing a all shots on one target. But I really wanted to take Mamba out, so that's why I kind of pulled all my machine gun hits on him. All right, so that is the end of turn one. Nobody needs to move. That is the end of turn one going on to turn two. All right, so uh, once an enemy is taken out, then uh, the reinforcement phase uh, kicks in. I, I roll to see if the other enemy swarm comes into the game. But since no one has been slain yet, we skip the reinforcement phase. Uh, we skip the enemy defense phase and uh, just do the resolution phase. All right, so Warhound has a jammed machine gun, so uh, he's going to get a shooting action. So he, he's going to have to use one of his actions, his shooting action, in order to unjam the gun. And then uh, unjamming the weapon requires a shooting action and succeeds automatically. So, so he unjams his weapon and then he's going to move, actually going to cross the river. Um, so Warhound has a movement of five inches. He's going to lose one inch due to the river. Um, so we'll just give him a total of four inches. So he crosses, splashes into the water and appears on the other side of the bridge. And line of sight is blocked because of the bridge. So he's going to have to do something later. So he's activated. So that's really good to know about the guns. So Warhound has moved. And that is the first player action. We now move into the next phase. Wraith has a speed of 9 inches. He also has an air speed of 8 inches. So he's going to shoot first. In this game, you don't need to worry about sh uh, moving and then shooting. 
you can either shoot and move or or uh, move and shoot. So that's kind of nice. <coughs> and takes out another. Boop. Another little macaw mech. So now he's going to move. And I think he's going to use his flying for eight inches. And he's just going to right into the forest. So he is in the forest. So the forest just reduces his movement uh, by one inch. So uh, that pretty much ends his turn there. All right. So uh, both Warhound and Tempest are in the same kind of distance to uh, the Mamba. So I'm just going to roll a dice. One through three. This one gets targeted and the four through six, the uh, Warhound gets targeted. So I rolled a five, so it's Tempest. All right, so Tempest is going to take another rocket fire. Um, and let's see, it is firepower three. So that's three dice. However, I get an intercept roll and Tempest has intercept three. So I could potentially shoot all three rockets down. So going to my little dice roller here. All three rockets were shot down before Mamba could do anything. So that's good, that's good. Okay, so uh, now that Mamba fired, he's going to take action. Mex can go through the water, so I'll just put him on the river here. He like moves into the river. So I'm just going to say that the river will take away an inch of movement, just like forest. Okay. So he is behind that bridge there taking cover. And that was a uh, Mamba, the elite enemy. So now we're going to go to the uh, second player phase. All right. So before I do anything here in turn two, uh, turn two is almost over. I only have one more mech to move, and that's Tempest. I'm going, it is the swarm phase. So uh, this swarm here has to do a bug out test. So we roll 1d6 because there's only one figure left on the tray there. Okay. Um, we're going to have to roll on the bug out test. So let's see. I rolled a one. One through three, the last pilot decides not to join their comrades in death. Reinforcement phase. We are going to roll to see if another swarm comes in. The swarm that's on reserve. All right, so those macaws bugged out. They said later. And now we're going to move to the other swarm. So uh, the closest enemy, and they're going to move towards the closest enemy. And they always run, so their movement is six. Running is just your full movement. So they are going to run there and fire. Weapons fire detected. So they fire on Tempest. Now that is Swarm A. They're armed with beams, firepower one, so one dice. My screen rating is a two. So they hit, it hits on twos. Oh dear, I only have one armor left. So yes, it hits with a three. So uh, I take one more damage, armor damage. And so I have no armor left on Tempest. So the next hit is going to be on the... Damage table, that's uh So Tempest uh, with no armor is going to run up and squash one of the uh, little macaw mechs, okay? Uh, there's no hit roll or anything um, when it comes to swarms. A swarm or defense target takes one hit automatically with no hope of retaliation. Hits ignore sturdiness but not armor. Basically one guy is taken out, is crushed by Tempest.
he did a stomp. We have to roll on the reinforcement table. All right, so the scenario gives me the reinforcement phase. I roll a d6, and on a five or a six, an enemy swarm arrives. And that is a four, so no enemy swarm arrives, and turn two is over. Turn three now. All right, so there's no non-combat op option or equipment that I want to do. So I'm going to uh, activate Wraith. And he's just going to move, stomp over here by the building. Not that it's going to give him any cover because as we just discussed, as long as an, a mech can be seen, it can be fired upon. There's no real cover bonus due to the size and power of mech weapons. So he sees Mamba and he's going to fire his beam. Now uh, Mamba has uh, a screen of two. So I need twos to hit. So let's go to the dice thing here. Dice tray and roll. He rolls a two. Okay, rolls a two. So it is a hit. Add armor one. So he's going to get another armor damage. And so now Mamba has one armor left. So I'm going to mark that over. Thanks. All right. So that um, activates Wraith in the first player phase. Now we move on to the elite phase. Now, for the elite phase, Tempest is the closest here. So, fire his rockets. Three dice. And first things first, I get to fire my intercept roll, which is also three dice. So, I'm doing an intercept roll as he fires a volley of rockets. And I roll all fours. None of his rockets. Uh, do any effect. So as they came at me, Tempest shoots them down. So uh, he does get an action still. And I think he's going to stay put. He's not going to use his movement. He's going to stay put. He has an enemy on lock. So he's not going to move. All right. So that ends his uh, activation. And now we are going to uh, go straight into second player phase. Now, second player, I have the option of moving Tempest or Warhound. I think I'm going to give it to Warhound. And Warhound does not have launch capability, so he's just going to... Um, I'm going to take an inch away for that forest terrain that he's going to be crossing. So he moves five inches into... Uh, the terrain piece here and that still gives him line of sight to Mamba and now he's gonna fire let's see that's Warhound he has a machine gun so let's do machine guns now so uh, because it is one target I lose one dice instead of five dice it is four dice and he gets um, minus one Okay, and because the target is uh, way less than 10 inches, he's going to hit on fours. All right, so looking at this closer, uh, Warhound does have line of sight to the swarm there. I mean, the bridge is, is blocking some of it, but he does have line of sight to both Warhound and the swarm. And if we notice, uh, this distance is definitely less than uh, six inches. Okay, so he's going to be able to hit both that swarm, a member of that swarm, and the Mamba. So, yeah, so roughly from base, from base of the Mamba to the base of the swarm, it's about five inches. So he's going to, he's going to take the shot on both. I'm going to give three to the Mamba and two to the uh, swarm base. So I'll change the color dice appropriately. So the white dice are the swarm. Oh, yikes. Luckily it didn't jam again. 
Warhound's been having problems. So fours, that's two hits to uh, Mamba and no hits to the Swarm. Okay, so two hits taking away the Elite's last point of armor. Rolling on the enemy damage table and this is the Elite damage. And I rolled a six, destroyed. The mech is destroyed. Keep track of how many you have destroyed during the mission. Dun, 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 dun. Boom, there is a big splash of water as basically he is gone. All right, so uh, that's it. Mamba mech exploded in a colorful array of sci-fi fire. All right, so he is gone. And now we move very happily on to the swarm phase. Now, no, my guys did take a lot of damage, but now I have the upper hand. So uh, remember, I want to escape and I'm only playing six turns. Uh, this is turn four. I'm sorry, turn three. And we're going to finish up this turn and then move on to turn four. Uh, I definitely think I can do this. Definitely think. All right, so Warhound is there right by the bridge after successfully destroying the Mamba mech. And now um, it is the swarm phase. So swarm A or swarm B. There is no swarm B. So there's only one swarm left. And we're going to see if the other swarm enters the table soon. So he's going to move. The swarm's going to move back. Because they try to always be within firing range. So they are armed with beams. Firepower one. So one dice. Weapons fire detected. And my screen for the Tempest is two. So it needs two on the dice. Uh-oh, uh-oh. All right. And he has no armor left, so that sucks. Beam! Yeah! Miss! Yes! Uh, right. He misses. Pew! The beam hits the, the wall there and whatever. It just misses. So yay! Tempest is good. And now for uh, the last mech. Oh wait, I, I think. Yeah, the last mech is Tempest. He's going to get to go. Alright, so let's see. Tempest is going to fire his machine gun. Okay, now if I want to, I can do a berserk mode with the machine guns, which gives me three extra dice, but then the machine gun cannot be used again for the rest of the battle. So it is very tempting because uh, he has, let's see, he wouldn't be able to use his machine gun again, but he still has a beam weapon. So for the sake of drama, let's do that. He's going to go berserk. So Tempest is uh, going to fire on the swarm. Now, the way I'm doing it is uh, the swarm does not give the uh, minus rating the, because uh, although it is an individual base, there are a lot of little mechs on that base. So I'm not gonna count it as a single target. So basically he'll get the full armor rating on berserk mode, but that's gonna overheat his gun and he's not gonna be able to do fire the gun again this round but that's okay i don't care um so we're he's gonna go berserk he yells and they hit on fours because the swarm is very close oh my goodness are you kidding me all right well it causes two hits at least and the, that gun is done i mean not only is it jammed but it's just completely overheated it is done but he does wipe out both mechs on the base. And uh, that's going to end the game. Well, let's see. Because I, I'm going to see if the enemy comes in. If he does, we'll, we'll continue with one swarm. But, I mean, the game is pretty much uh, done at this point. I could end it, you know. Uh, let's just see out of curiosity if the other swarm comes in so I can continue practicing. So it ends at the end of turn three. Four, no, 
it's either a five or a six. So no enemy swarm comes in. Something happened with the reinforcements or they decided that no way, man, we're not going to go into that battlefield. So uh, that's it. Game ends and my three mechs can now, although they are damaged, this guy has no weapon left. Uh, well, he has a particle beam. So they're all going to escape through the necessary table edge. Yeah! All right. And that was Weasel Tech. A little bit rough because I'm not feeling 100% well today, guys. I hope you excuse it. I'm, I forgive any mistakes. I was doing mistakes. And so going back and correcting them and all that stuff. Um, but basically, that's it. This was a very simple demonstration of the game remember the real flavor of this game is the campaign uh settings right that you can play with this game it's the campaign tables and all that also there were a few phases we didn't add in this game and in the next game i want to add equipment and uh maybe an objective or something so that we could play uh the full phases in the game also if uh you add any defenses on the table, like uh, either robotic guns or something like that. They don't move. They stay put. Uh, usually around objective markers, you'll have those kinds of defenses. They have their own phase that they go in. So a very cool, a very, very cool game. Very fast. I do like the rules very much. I love the whole thing, uh, the way the rockets work and, and the way everything works. Pretty cool. So that is it, guys. We'll see you in the next game. And this was another MJ solo game, Weasel Tag. We'll see more of this game in the future. Hopefully, better representation of the rules. Talk to you soon, guys.